I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different organic reactions. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation, so if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. It's a really cool reaction in which we're taking this molecule, which has two benzene rings on it, and a ketone adding a little bit of acid and effectively making what's an anthracene derivative. And it proceeds via some pretty straightforward organic chemistry type reactions that you've probably encountered before. The first step in this reaction is going to be the protonation of this carbonyl oxygen. So we use the acid to protonate that group. And importantly, what that's going to do is effectively turbocharge the carbonyl carbon for nucleophilic attack. So now originally I drew this molecule in this orientation, but remember I can rotate around this sigma bond. So that's when I'm the way I'm gonna draw it next. Where this carbon bond is still present here, we still have this R group, which I'll label as R prime to distinguish between the other R group. And when I draw in the second benzene ring, I'll do so where I place the ketone coming off of this group here, which remember has now been protonated, so it's gonna be positively charged. And that's where our second R group is. Then I can place in these pi bonds. And this is the product of the first step where we've protonated that carbonyl oxygen. And remember, when we protonated this carbonyl oxygen, we, it's positively charged. That effectively turbocharges the electrophilicity of the carbon, a part of that carbonyl group. And that's gonna make it susceptible to attack by even weak nucleophiles like aromatic rings. So alarm bells should be ringing that what comes next is going to be an electrophilic aromatic substitution where the pi electrons located in this ring can come and attack as a nucleophile, this carbon position, kicking up these pi electrons and making that an alcohol. And that's actually how we close this center ring that's a part of this anthracene derivative. And remember, when we use this acid, we also generated the conjugate base. So I'm gonna point that out now, that way when it comes into play, you'll see in just a second what it's actually doing. So here we have disrupted the aromaticity, where now there should be a positive charge located at this carbon because our new carbon to carbon bond is here, which is how we generate this second six-membered ring. And at this stage, everything else still remains the same. So I'll still place in all these other pi bonds. Importantly, here is where this carbon to carbon bond was formed, which is where our OH group is gonna be located as well as our second R group. I'll go ahead and place in this R prime as well. And then this is the product of this initial transformation where we did electrophilic aromatic substitution. And importantly, there is still just three bonds to this carbon, which means that there's a hydrogen here as well. So then this conjugate base can come down. Remember, this is gonna be a resonance stabilized arenium complex like you've seen previously in your organic chemistry courses when you covered electrophilic aromatic substitution, which will come and do an elimination reaction or deprotonate this. These electrons will come back down to re-aromatize this, this ring on the terminal side of the anthracene derivative. So then the product of that transformation is gonna contain all three rings. The one on the left and the right are already going to be aromatic where we still have all the pi bonds located inside of them. Here we have the R prime group, here we have our OH group, and here we have the second R group. And now we remember have regenerated our acid that we used initially. So what that means is that that acid can be used to protonate our alcohol, which is eventually how we get rid of it in our final product. So this will come and be protonated, which will generate our next intermediate, which contains those three rings, where we have all of the pi bonds located currently on the outer rings and none on the inside rings. So here, now we have generated OH2, which is gonna be positively charged and thus a great leaving group. This is going to be where our R prime location is, and this is the product following proton transfer with that weak acid. So then from here, since this is such a great leaving group, it will actually just leave, and it's gonna form a hyperconjugation stabilized carbocation. So we can do this because this is a tertiary alcohol. So now we have all of these three rings. We have our R group down here and our R prime here. We have the aromatic ring on this side. And then importantly, remember there's still a bunch of hydrogens around here. So there's gonna be a carbocation that we eventually need to deal with at this location. But importantly, remember there is still a hydrogen here. We 
generated our conjugate base in this step where we protonated our alcohol, which turned it into a better leaving group, which just left to form a stabilized carbocation. And now that conjugate base can actually come in and deprotonate this hydrogen located way over here on the other side of the molecule. So when that happens, these pi electrons will come down. That's actually gonna kick these pi electrons over as well, so those will go here. These will come here, and then these pi electrons will actually come over here. And ultimately, that actually gets us to our final step, where we generate this anthracene derivative. So notice that each of these steps, while we're generating a molecule that's pretty complicated, especially if you're just in first or second semester chemistry, organic chemistry, notice that the first step is just protonated in carbonyl oxygen, which is very common in that course. The second step is gonna be an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, which can achieve this goal because we've protonated this carbonyl oxygen, turbocharging the electrophilicity of this carbon. Subsequently, we form our arenium stabilized carbocation, which can be reforming our aromatic ring by deprotonation of one of those hydrogens, which will get us to this stage where we end up with an alcohol that can be protonated by the reformed acid. This is going to allow us to turn an alcohol or an OH group into a better leaving group where it can just leave as water, which is very common, especially in first semester organic chemistry when you learned about substitution reactions, especially involving water. And then from there, all that needs to happen is that we deprotonate this hydrogen to reform the aromaticity in all three of these rings. And ultimately, that's the driving force for why this reaction would occur. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, give it a thumbs up down below. And for next week, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this organic reaction. And make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.